video. I work on a project which uh, provides, uh, builds a platform for operators, which I'm going to talk next. Um, today I'm going to talk about how video can be delivered and not just the uh, whatever free stuff we do see on uh, YouTube or other platforms. Uh, you guys know Netflix and how it is delivering the content and we love it and we pay money for that and uh, we don't even think to go off torrents and do other things. Maybe some of you do, but uh, we pay and we enjoy the quality. Uh, I work on a product called Ericsson Media First. It's an um, end-to-end cloud based uh, platform, IPD platform, but it's more OTT right now. It's, it's a small difference. Uh, what's IPTV or basically IPTV means that you deliver the content via private networks. OTT means you use whatever infrastructure you have right now. Um, so it's 21st century, century and we like to watch movies on computer, TV, on iPads and whatever mobile device we have. And that's what we're capable to do right now with Media First. And the product itself is destined for, designated for operators like UPC or other big telecoms who can provide video content over internet. And yes, it's a cool product. It's, as you can see, it provides rich uh, smart recommendations and search and other cool things I cannot talk about. But definitely you're going to see it anytime soon uh, in Ireland as well. Uh, okay. So I think you know uh, how the plead video was played before a couple of years back, say 10, 15 years ago, when we start to embrace internet and started being addicted to watch videos of cats. Uh, I think <laughs> MetaCafe and other big platforms. Um, I, rem I still remember when I had to download ActiveX plugins and some Windows Media Player stuff that I didn't really like or didn't really work well, it was crashing. And then Flash came to the rescue. So we got a Flash player. We play content with Flash. And I guess the YouTube proved it that it's a very good technology that fits the purpose. Mm -hmm. And Microsoft strike back a couple of years back after that introduced Silverlight. And it's quite interesting. Um, and I guess Netflix used Silverlight for quite a while. I think it's still now at some point, but not quite sure. But well, here's a nice good example how you can could play or how you still can play the say a video file using Flash. You just uh, object tag or uh, embedded tag. So you specify a move, uh, the file, it plays back. It's just a simplified way of using it. Mm. Okay, of course. Everything comes at a price, and we still remember when Steve Jobs said we're not going to support uh, Flash anymore because it's buggy and it uh, presents a very big security flaw for our systems and our users. So, yes, quite a true. It's quite true, and um, even Microsoft is not supporting Silverlight anymore, or they're going to phase it out in a couple, couple of years. So, what we should do? It's a big segmentation on the market. When it comes to copyrighted content, we have a lot of players. We have Apple, who tries to pull over, uh, attract all its users. We have Microsoft, who tries to get in. And we have the winner, who is Netflix, everybody loves. And OK, so this is a typical diagram how a content is delivered. Uh, that's uh, taken. It's called Play Ready from Microsoft. Um, do you have a? Civil light client, you have the content, and I guess it comes to copyright owners. Uh, so every time you want to watch something, you need you, you kind of rent it out or pay it. So that's why this kind of individualization server it means it means it sign it signs your stream and it delivers to you. And the silver light and all this play ready thing takes care of it to deliver it to you. Uh, it's quite complex, and uh, and that's only Microsoft. Uh, I want to think Adobe has its own backend and uh, Apple is, uh, as, as well. So it's a real battle on the market uh, for a consumer. But it's 21st century, and it's like a couple of years back, or even a long time ago, you buy a vinyl, you play it anywhere in anybody's house, because you have a 
whatever, playback device. Same with CDs. Uh, same rule should apply to digital content. Like I rent it somewhere, I have to be able to play it pretty much anywhere. So the HTML5 debate, they, um, they try to standardize everything. So whatever platform I have that supports HTML5, they're like, okay, browsers mostly right now. Uh, they should comply to certain standards so I can play copyrighted content anywhere. But the problem is it's, it's a lot of uh, copyright and copyright things. That's the first thing. Another one is the pending patents. Uh, say, if I implement a certain DRM system support in my browser, that means Apple will come after me and say, hey, actually, it's our invention. You have to pay us some royalty. So the whole idea is, as I mentioned, we need to be able to play back any video content, audio content in any browser, any platform, uh, eliminating any third-party plugins. Why should I care of some? Because uh, we know that uh, QuickTime is, OK, it was supported on Windows and Apple. So I'm not sure about Linux. Uh, Windows wasn't really friendly with non-Windows platforms. Uh, it is now, but a long time ago it wasn't. Um, Again, the fight is what standard to use, uh, what encoding format. Uh, for these very same reasons, uh, uh, the HTML5 consortium, the, the guys in the web uh, consortium, they agreed to at least support a couple of them as OGG, Vorbis from Tiora. Uh, Google stepped in a long time ago. This, uh, they proposed WebM. Uh, this is actually as a, a a very good, interesting uh, thing, and they, they contribution uh, step. Uh, they contribution is very good because they uh, they agreed later on to use a MPEG dash uh, adaptive streaming encoding. Um, there's no yet uh, de facto format that should be supported. So at least we have some guidelines. What we should do is like the browser should support uh, the. Encoding format should be good compression, uh, good performance, uh, good quality. We, we, we like HD, uh, Ultra HD is on the way, and someday we're going to have a very big screen. We want that quality over the internet. Uh, royalty free, of course, and uh, hardware decoders should be supported, and that uh, goes into mobile phones, and that's where uh, the performance is coming from. If the hardware is support, as uh, implementing the hardware level, will have a better performance. Everybody knows that. Okay, so I guess that's not really just as a, a sample. It's not a big difference what I've seen before. With we use now video tag. Okay, we specify the file, and if the browser supports uh, the video tag and the format, it say it's fine, I'm going to play back. Um, it's, it, there are more examples. We can add various elements, say skip forward, pause, and other controls to just a pretty standard these days uh, video player. Uh, we can specify different formats and so on. Um, okay, more examples, if you're curious, you can go to Mozilla website and try them all, but I think we already know what's, what's there. OK. so. Um, but um, what I've been talking on is just the front end. It's a it's HTML tag. And it's fine for unencrypted streams, for something that we want to share with everybody for the entire, with the entire world. But when it comes to companies like Apple or Netflix, or we want, say, you are a freelancer, and you're building some um, online tutorials, and you want to make sure that only paid subscribers have it. Okay. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. You want to protect your uh, content, um, then you need to have some sort of protection. And usually comes, say, you apply encryption to your streams. But how we should handle that encryption and decryption, of course, uh, in, with HTML compatible way? So has been a couple of areas defined. Um, we need a protection mechanism, basically the keys. How we're going to encrypt and decrypt the streams? Uh, a system that will decrypt that, a license server that will take care of the key management and distribution, and uh, encodings, of course, because you might watch a video on a flat screen, 
big day like this one, or on, on the way to work in the bus, on a mobile phone, and so on. So we need like something that will be able uh, optimally to deliver our content. Um, so far, so good. We have support in all browsers, um, the major ones. I know that Mozilla was the last one, and they've been complaining about it. The major reasons why, because uh, from one point of view, it's not like a massive improvement, and uh, we still have, we are tied into a proprietary uh, DRM system. We cannot just, say, take our video and play it somewhere else, another browser. Um, we need, we support bit, adaptive bitrate streaming, is the things that we're talking. If we want to watch on a mobile phone, why should I download the ultra HD content where I can have it optimized for my mobile screen? and my mobile network. Uh, ClearKey is, it's basically the one that will allow us to, to watch the content in different systems. So if I purchase, say, a video on Netflix, I should watch it on Apple without many headaches, import or extra movements, which is, sounds great, but the reality is it's a bit different. Um, okay, it's a big nasty diagram, okay? It's what you see in the middle is our browser. What we see above and the bottom is how we can uh, interact, how do it interacts. It's like, say we have a video and the browser should be responsible for detecting the, that content is encrypted and should be able to identify that this particular video is encrypted with this DRM key and then start negotiating with content systems uh, key distribution system and then we'll basically we have a bunch of events and we know when to step in and get the key, uh, acquire the key from the license server, get it to content uh, delivery system, decrypt it and present it to the user, okay? It's, it's a bit more complex and it's not really, say, JavaScript stuff. It's a lot of heavy backend work and uh, a lot of things. <laughs> can take hours. Um, the other things we should know, it's uh, HTML uh, extended media, encrypted media extension is not enough. We need to have some media source extension. It's uh, allow JavaScript to generate streams to facilitate uh, things like uh, adaptive streaming, uh, which is very important. I've, like, um, I was thinking it's outside of this presentation, but it's a very nice, a video on uh, from Google, they have, you go to a page and you can restrict your bandwidth and they'll, uh, you can see how the quality degrades and or improves once you increase the, uh, the quality of your uh, bandwidth. So uh, this is like the core of the, 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 the core concept. And uh, yes, the MPEG dash is the, one of the standards uh, agreed between big companies, and uh, I think WebM is just a spin-off from Google. HLS, it's a proprietary standard from Apple, which uh, they kind of tried to, they, it's not a defined standard, so I think they try to keep this loophole, like, okay, we have it, uh, something that is not finished, and uh, you guys may implement, may not, it's, it's a very tricky movement from, uh, from Apple. So, um, okay, so I guess that's, that's it, not too much. And mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Questions? <laughs> yes, no? Oh. Um, so the stuff you're talking about at the end, is, is that built now or is it like spec stuff? I guess uh, HLS has been on the market for a long time. Um, Apple, I think the Apple TV obviously implemented Safari, supports it. Uh, Impact Dash, it's, it's quite new and um, I'm not quite sure who implemented it right now, but I definitely know that there's been working, work going on to adopt this, uh, uh, these standards in, um, in various, various companies who work in, the, in this field. Yeah. 
and is there anyone using it like in kind of production systems or uh, I can't really tell you about MPEG dash um, but the uh, HTML5 uh, Netflix definitely has it uh, the first implementation was uh, in partnership with Google and initially they have a specific implementation for Netflix so they'll help them to get rid of uh, Silverlight. Uh, but as far as I know, they have now in testing the HTML5 uh, EME support. Um, yeah, that's kind of, um, I think it's the, the one of um, bugs been found into, as I call it, it's one interface that's been implemented for ages. And that's why the people try to move away from it because it's it's buggy and we still we do we move towards that as well it, I can't tell exactly what's gonna happen it's of course the legacy system is the dinosaur that usually slows down everybody uh, but we still keep moving forward and pretty soon we're gonna have this on the, on production thanks anyone else Hi. Uh, before we had the server side and client side uh, playlists, what happens with that? Like, is there anything like that now? Can you be more specific, specific about playlists? Playlists, yeah. Uh, before uh, we had those ASX files, for example, to specify the client side playlist and server side playlist. So we could, we could switch streams on server side. Uh, you know, we have a list of files, video files on server side, and we can specify the playlist, what what will be streamed next, for example. Um. I think that was that was supported with uh, Windows Media Player or something like that. I mean, yeah, uh, playlists like, I can implement that in my application, but is there some standards to support that? For playlists, I don't yeah. think so. It's pure to your uh, backend implementation. Uh, oh, okay. However, the video works is each stream has its uh, a frame metadata, and on, based on that metadata, dynamically you can jump to different streams. Uh, that's that's more into MPEG dash. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the adaptation. Okay, cool. Thank you. And one more question. Switch to UTP streaming uh, instead of H. Uh, multicast streams, yes, they're supported. For example. That's is that supported by the yeah, yeah, it is. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Darren.